Hi, it's Mike Stevenson here. Today in this video, we're going to take a look at um, Data Factory versus Synapse pipelines as part of um, the Azure integration services, where to use what series of um, videos we're doing. Now, I guess the first thing to say on, uh, on this topic is we also have Microsoft Fabric out now, which does overlap with this. Um, so we will add a video at some point discussing differences between Synapse and Data Factory and Fabric. Um, so I will need to read up a little bit on first, but uh, for now, I think this is still a valid a valid um, topic area. So if we have a look at the table here. So if we think about what these technologies are, they both have similar use cases and similar target audiences. So Synapse is a bigger platform than Data Factory. So there's a whole bunch of extra stuff in Synapse that isn't in Data Factory, but it, um, within Synapse, you have this pipelines feature, and that's the bit that's conceptually similar to Data Factory. So really, that pipeline feature and Data Factory, they're both targeted at data integrators. So these are people who are going to be um, they're going to be taking data from one system and bringing it into another. So it's going to be big data sets. Um, it, in particularly in the idea of Synapse, you might be bringing it into your data lake, so you'll be pulling in data from a SQL database or from um, SAP or some other system. With Data Factory, you're probably going to be pulling that data into a, into a SQL Azure database or a SQL database on-premise. Um, you might um, be doing other stuff. The, the big the difference with Synapse versus Data Factory from that integration perspective is Synapse comes with this this data platform and as part of the product, so you kind of link together the the data lake, and you've got the dedicated SQL data warehouse, which are part of the Synapse ecosystem. That data factory doesn't really have that. So, um, from that perspective, though, from the data integrators up here, they're really about moving the data between different um, locations, and that's really the pipeline feature of Synapse. So. In terms of key use cases, we've mentioned that it's um, it's this ETL, ELT sort of pattern. We get the data, we pull it into a data source, we transform it. Um, we, we might run through a number of stages to process that data. Now, one of the benefits of Synapse here is you've got that bigger ecosystem. So Data Factory, you're really um, you're having the, the pipelines and data factory that will process the data. You can call out to other resources. So you might call out to a Spark job, but it's external to the data factory. You might um, run procedures in a SQL database or something like that. But data factory is really concentrating on the pipeline of processing the data, and then it calls to things outside of the data factory resource. With Synapse, um, You've kind of, if you imagine it as being a box that bundles together a bunch of stuff. So, for example, a, a Spark pool comes as part of your Synapse setup. So you can configure it so your pipeline and Synapse can easily integrate with this Spark pool that's part of the same workspace. You've also got things in Synapse like serverless SQL queries where you can execute SQL on top of files in a storage account where you can leverage them from for your pipelines to get data from your internal um, data lake. Now, in terms of differences, um, Synapse is like Data Factory, but it has all of this other stuff. That's, that's the key difference. Data Factory is more like a subset of Synapse where it's just the pipelines bit. Now, predominantly, most of the features are very similar. There are a couple of things that are different here. So you've got a couple of differences around um, things like your integration runtime. So an integration runtime is a machine that the pipeline is going to run on. So you've got a couple of different flavors where you've got the Azure runtime or you can have a self-hosted runtime. And <clears throat> excuse me. So if you configure a runtime on Data Factory, the likelihood is that customers are going to build multiple data factories if you're doing data integration at any kind of scale with data factory um, you're probably going to have like um, almost like a sandbox with a group of related pipelines will be in your, your given data factory so you might have multiple of them and they can share that single um, integration runtime whereas with synapse um, you would have an integration runtime but it would kind of be linked to that workspace and um, 
and you can't really share them in the same way. So I think this is the idea. I think one of the big themes with Synapse versus Data Factory is Synapse is more like this centralized data integration plus data analytics, whereas Data Factory is more decentralized, where you would have multiple data factories, but you're more likely to have a single Synapse workspace with a, a group of stuff that are that, that centralized view. Now, there is um, a few other features that come with Synapse. They're not necessarily part of the pipelines, but they do make life a bit easier for data integration. So, for example, here um, you have things like Cosmos Link, SQL Link, and Dataverse Link. Now, if you're doing um, data factory integration, moving data around, you're going to have to kind of go out to these systems and query the data, whereas in, if you're in Synapse, um, you do have this, this um, say, Cosmos Link, SQL Link, Dataverse Link, which can make it easier for you to be able to query those data sources. So there might be scenarios where you don't necessarily need a pipeline to pull data in because you can query it from uh, from Synapse with this, you know, take Cosmos Link as an example. Um, you could query it from Synapse, but you couldn't really do the equivalent in Data Factory. You'd have to pull the data into to some kind of SQL database or something. So there, there are where features mean, I guess in this case, it kind of arguably means you don't need to build a pipeline because you've got the link would be one example. And things like Dataverse, um, you know, the Dataverse link is really up about... Um, the export into Data Lake from Power Platform, which makes it easy for your Synapse to use that data. Now, whether it be that you process the data with a pipeline is one, one option, or you query it with serverless SQL or Spark pools, the, the whole point of that is to make that Dataverse integration easier, whereas with Data Factory, you're more likely to be querying um, querying the dataverse directly and, and doing something with that data so that they'd be kind of different architecture implementation patterns you're likely to use now in terms of overlaps if we look down here there's lots of um lots of things that are very similar they've both got um this etl elt kind of pattern that they're working with they both support vnet integration they both have managed and self-hosted runtimes they both offer um integration for devops and github and things like that now one thing i do want to call back out just mentioning that last piece here if we think about the devops experience so that's typically a little bit different so with um data factory you're going to have a devops integration at the level of your data factory and you're going to have multiple pipelines within that data factory will be part of your um your branch so you would deploy them as a, as a group into that single data factory. Now that, that has advantages for this decentralized pattern where if you've got multiple data factories, you can have one repo per data factory would be a good example. With um, Synapse, it's gonna be a bit different because um, your, your repo integration is gonna be more at the Synapse workspace level. So your you're going to include other things beyond um, just the pipeline configuration. So there'll be other stuff that you might have in the workspace you're configuring. That would be part of your DevOps experience. <clears throat> so I guess where the, where this really comes down to is, um, you know, in the, in the DevOps experience, the Synapse one's going to be more complicated because there's more stuff going on. And it really comes down to an architecture decision of, are we just moving data around with pipelines? You'd probably go to Data Factory because it's less to think about. It's a bit simpler. If you're doing all of the other stuff that you would need to build a data platform, you're more likely to be thinking about pipelines for Synapse. And, and absolutely, um, I think there'll be customers where you might have strategic pipelines where you're focusing around Synapse and building a platform. And then you might have tactical pipelines where you're doing some kind of project specific integration requirement for data you might choose data factory um so i think that that is a realistic one for that separation of concern and, and kind of keeping it simple um obviously fabric microsoft fabric throws a few spanners in the work for that decision so you, you, need, you need to think about what your strategy is going to be about them as well if you're choosing between those two um, price wise, the last bit down the bottom here, price wise, Synapse and Data Factory 
pricing is very similar, almost identical in a lot of ways. There's a couple of extra pieces on the price table on Azure about Data Factory, which might be worth checking out if you're doing that. And I think um, one thing to just note on price is um, I think in the real world, um, I've seen a couple of cases where people were spending a bit more money than they expected to spend. So they priced it up on the you know, the cost calculator, they expected to cost a certain amount. And then when they implemented it, it cost a bit more. And it was to do with like understanding how your pipeline runs, how it processes the, the data, how frequently. And actually they were using more um, more CPU and, and sort of um, DTU units when they were actually executing the, um, the job. So you have to kind of think about that, that V core usage um, and probably like when you're implementing it, make sure you're testing cost as well as testing functionality to make sure the cost's in line with your assumptions so you don't get unexpectedly bitten later. I think this one job we'd seen, they, um, they kind of modified how the job ran and it, and it just reduced the cost quite significantly. So just be aware there's some implementation aspects to that. Now, if we take a look at a couple of um, reference architectures here. So this is the architecture we had in a previous video about data factory versus logic apps. So here we had our branch offices. They submit files to the FTP site. We had a data factory pipeline that picks them up, loads them into a SQL database, and then our Power BI reports are querying that data to, to be able to produce tactical um, management reports based on data produced from branch offices. This is a perfect um, data factory scenario. So here we're doing um, you know, processing of files. We might have a few different formats, that kind of thing. We've got a SQL database. Um, it, it's pretty lightweight, pretty simple. Um, it, it would probably be one data factory just for this kind of job, maybe. Um, you, you know, you can have that nice um, top, you know, data factory fairly targeted and scoped to just this business use case would work quite well. Um, you know, to be honest, there's not really a lot to say about this. It's just just a very vanilla, easy to implement data factory pattern um, here. Now, if we consider Synapse, what you would typically find would be something a bit more like this, where you've got pipelines in a fewer places. You've got a bigger strategic platform going on. So here we've got um, some pipelines that are doing imports of data from your line of business systems over here. So that's being brought into your data lake. You might also have um, manually uploaded data. Let's say, for example, um, the user's uploading it to SharePoint and we've got a logic app that pulls files down into the data lake. Or, or maybe you have, um, you know, you've got a file down here gets uploaded by it a data engineer direct to the data lake. So in various ways, you get data into your landing zone in the data lake. And then you've got jobs that are processing with pipelines from your files getting created in the data lake. And that would be, you know, say, for example, we execute a Spark job that processes some files, creates data in your standard zone. And then you might have some more um, pipelines that basically takes data, transforms it, and puts it in your data warehouse models. And, and this is where really the, um, the pipelines play a part of this bigger picture. So here we've got data going through multiple stages of maturity, getting transformed, getting rationalized. And we get from the raw data from the line of business apps through to the data warehouse. And I guess this, this person here doing reports, you know, the thing we can remember is with Synapse, depending on the types of reports, you might be querying from the warehouse, from the standard zone, you might be doing experimentation against the landing zone raw data. That's where having the data in multiple stages and path levels of maturity, it lets the business explore what this data can do for them. Now, if we think about um, the, the pipeline role, it's really this moving data around important data and I think if you compare this use case with the last use case, the big difference is about where you're going to store the data. So here, although it's a, a storage account, really, that the data lake's based on, um, you know, you're, you're treating the data lake as part of your Synapse platform in a way because they're, the way they're connected together. And certainly the dedicated data warehouse over here, that's very much part of your Synapse, Synapse Analytics platform. So 
because you're in that ecosystem, it makes sense to be using Synapse pipelines in this type of architecture. In the previous um, the previous diagram, it probably wouldn't have made sense to put all the extra complexity of Synapse in for that very kind of specific use case where you've got an existing database that you use and that's not part of a Synapse platform. You're pulling data in from external places and it's it's much more like a, a I guess in some ways a tactical solution um and it just makes sense a lot of the time to keep it simple even if you know there's also an argument even if you had a synapse data platform already because the data is not really going into the the data lake or the data warehouse it probably doesn't make sense to over complicate those pipelines because you'll want to change them and you can, you can just keep it simpler by having it separate um Hopefully that gives a good overview of some architecture thinking about when you would use Synapse pipelines, when you would use data factories, some thinking about the pros and cons of each. Um, love to hear comments. Um, people who've done a lot more than me with Synapse and data factory might have some good views on this um, as well. And, and hopefully this helps people just paint that high level picture of where the positioning of these two products is. Thanks for listening.